Okay, bio people, so more on cloning. Today we're going to talk about modern methods for cloning. A clone is an organism whose DNA is an exact copy of another organism's DNA. Technically speaking, identical twins are clones of each other because they have the same DNA sequence. Identical twins happen when the zygote formed by the egg and the sperm splits into two or even three pieces. Identical twins are pretty common, but identical triplets or quadruplets are much less common. You might remember from our last screencast that when a sperm and egg unite, they form a ball of cells that are called stem cells. These cells are what we call totipotent, meaning that they can become any kind of cell in the resulting organism. They go through a specialization process that results in differentiated cells. So for instance, liver cells, pancreatic cells, cells in the intestinal system, neurons, blood cells, or muscle cells. Muscle cells, blood cells, neurons, etc. cannot go backwards and become a totipotent cell. However, depending on where you place them, stem cells take on cues from what's around them and can become any kind of cell that you want. Scientists used totipotent stem cells in order to clone an organism. Dr. Ian Wilmot cloned the first whole organism in 1997. The first organism that they cloned was actually a sheep through the process called somatic nuclear transfer. Scientists cloned Dolly the sheep using two different species of sheep, one called the Scottish blackface sheep and the other called the Finn Dorset sheep. The Scottish blackface sheep donated the cytoplasm of the cell, whereas the Vin Dorset sheep donated the nucleus. Scientists took an egg cell from the Scottish blackface sheep and removed its nucleus using a very fine needle. This process is called enucleation. Scientists also removed the nucleus from the Vin Dorset sheep using a needle. For this part of the process, they chose to take some of the Finn Dorset sheep's udder cells. Remember that every cell in the body has the same genetic code contained within its DNA. If they could somehow get this nucleus implanted into this cell right here, in theory, you could create an exact copy of this Finn Dorset white sheep. Any resulting organism from the union of these two cells would have the exact same genetic makeup as the egg's nucleus donor. Scientists then fused the nucleus from the white sheep with the egg cell from the black sheep using a jolt of electricity. They repeated this process 277 times, each time using a nucleus from a white sheep and an egg cell from a black sheep. Scientists then implanted whichever of the embryos survived beyond the first few cell divisions into surrogate Scottish black-faced sheep. Remember that any sheep that develops with a, from a cell that has this nucleus right here should be a white-faced sheep, but they were implanted into Scottish black-faced sheep. Of the 277 attempts, only one sheep survived. Scientists had finally succeeded in creating a clone. Unfortunately, Dolly died at the age of six. Clearly more research needs to be done into improving the longevity of cloned species. In the modern world, there are two major uses for cloning, reproductive and therapeutic. In reproductive cloning, we are creating more organisms which might have certain desirable characteristics. Some people like the idea of cloning because they think that it could be useful to have spare parts for humans. So in theory, you could create a clone of yourself that has a spare heart, a spare brain, and other spare organs that you might need if you ever became seriously ill. Having cloned body parts would eliminate the problems of rejecting donor organs. However, this also brings up the idea of whether or not cloning would be ethical. If you grew an entire organism from your own cells, would that organism have rights? Would it be alive? And would it have the same rights as a regular human being? If you're interested in this idea, you can read the fictional but interesting story, My Sister's Keeper. This is a story about a young girl who has a serious genetic disease, but whose sister was cloned from her in order to be spare parts in order to help her survive. Reproductive cloning is also highly inefficient. Remember that researchers had to make 277 attempts in order to clone just one dorset-faced sheep. Clearly, cloning large herds of large animals is not going to be an efficient way to feed the world. Cloning can also be used in many therapeutic ways. For instance, you could use embryonic stem cells to grow whole organs for people who needed them, rather than having them wait on the donor list for a new heart, a new kidney, or a new liver. However, it's still important to consider the ethics of whether or not we should be using stem cells. That's it, everybody. See you in class.